In the last video, we discovered and explored a lot of the different anatomy components of the dial caliper, how to use it. And for this video, I want to focus on calibration and being able to get an accurate reading. So as far as this goes, when you, before you start any sort of measurements of the caliper, you want to make sure your caliper is closed. So you don't necessarily need to have it locked. But, and then when I go to close it, I want to make sure I'm going to take my thumb off of the scroll wheel. So again, I don't want to be squeezing them together, so which can get a little bit of an inaccurate measurement. I want to go ahead and just close them down so they touch, and then go ahead and take my scroll wheel or my thumb off the scroll wheel. If one thing you want to look for is on your caliper, you want to make sure that your dial is reading right on zero. If it isn't, this is going to be where we're going to make a little calibration. So if it is, then you can... Um, continue to go and make measurements however so if you ever need this for future reference so you may want to take a look at this so the knob on the bot on the bottom of the dial is the dial lock knob and if I turn it to the left so when I close this down if I'm not reading at zero if I turn this to the left it'll loosen and I'm gonna actually physically turn my dial so if I'm reading a little bit off of zero I can actually turn my dial so that way my pointer is going to be reading right on top of zero and then when I get it placed I'm going to go ahead and lock this, lock this back into place so, so that way that this doesn't turn. Then, just to kind of verify, I'm going to open up and close, make sure I'm reading on zero. And typically, I, I like to do this about a few times just to make sure I'm getting a consistent reading. So there, there's three times I'm going to be able to get that um, reading accurately. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the measurements that we can get. So with our uh, component here, I'm going to go ahead and measure this. So I'll open up. And when I'm taking a measurement, I don't want to squeeze down on the, the, onto the material. I just want to have it where it touches. And then usually what I do is I'll take my thumb off of the scroll wheel. You can also turn the lock knob in this position. You can even, without having to hold the, hold the component or part that you're measuring, then you can take a look at what kind of measurement you have. So here I'm going to end up seeing that I'm start here I'm at zero so my smaller increments are the tenth of an inch so here I'm and then you'll see a larger one once I get past nine tenths so that means I'm at one inch so with one inch here I'm gonna end up taking a look at well where am I at so I know I'm at least one inch I'm gonna look at my tenths measurements so the big thing is to to watch out for is that even if you can see the number you need to make sure you can see the line past the number so that's the most common kind of mistake that students make is they may be able to see the number so for example right now I'm seeing the line past the five and I'm past the zero so but if I back this down to where I'm seeing I can see 1.5 here but I cannot see the line so actually my measurement would be 1.490 or 1 and 490 thousandths so as we would say in a lot of terminology so but since in this case I am reading past the five and I'm seeing that line past it. I'm gonna end up having my measurement be 1.5 and then I'm gonna look at my dial. So my dial is uh, past five, so I'm gonna end up seeing 1.5 and then the, the biggest issue here is a lot of them wanna put 1.56, but actually it's 1.506. So one and 506 thousandths of an inch. So three decimal places is what we typically use for dial calipers and as far as being able to get the reading um, a lot of a lot of the activity that the, your students will be working with has you measuring down to the ten thousandth of an inch so that extra significant digit gets thrown in for um, kind of a good measure as far as indicating the uncertainty of a measurement so in this case um, when i'm looking at this 1.5 i'm a little bit uh, I'm a little bit past six actually whoops so I'm a little bit past six on this so I could record this if I'm recording down to the ten thousand of an inch 1.506 and I'm just a small amount over so maybe 1.5061 1.5062 the biggest thing I always stress to my students is that that last digit is always just kind of an estimation and that you know you may not ha have the exact answer as someone you know that's next to you but those first um, those first digits that we're, that we're reading down to the thousandth of an inch should be the same as anyone else and then that last 
kind of uh, significant digit can be a little bit varied. You know, I would count that as, as uh, you know, being right or wrong if I had 1.5061 uh, or 1.5062. So, but that's kind of how it takes with reading a dial caliper. So always first start with your blade. So look for any large inch increments. In the case here, we're at an inch. If, if it's anything under one, it'd be zero point. And then you would end up having your, look for your tenths of an inch. So the tenths of an inch first. So here, and like in this case, I did 1.5 and then go to your dial and see what you're reading and then estimate an extra digit for uncertainty down to the 10,000th of an inch. So this will conclude the video on how to read the dial caliper and we'll start taking a look at uh, what are some of the measurements you may be getting for Activity 3.3 and the T9 passenger body.